at the same time. Guys, hi, we're live. Let me just invite Carl on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Carol, as soon as you, you see me live on Instagram, just request to join. I'm Hi, here. Bridge. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Awesome. I'm just waiting for people to come in. Carl, when you can, can you request to join right there? My twin sister's what? here. <laughs> Everybody's like, you guys look okay. so like I'm like, I wish. We're live. Ah. Hi guys. We're live. Let me mute my phone. We're good. We're good. Can you hear me well? Yep. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yes, I can. Cool. Let me just change my headphones for a sec. Yes, and we can start. How was your day so far? There is something wrong in the network. Isa. Isa. Yes, you're back. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Hi, Amna. Hi, Nadine. Hi, Rita. How is everyone? Yep. Yeah. So let's uh, start. But first, you want to talk about your program, Isa, or you want to talk about it later? Yep. <laughs> yes, I'll do a swipe up uh, on uh, on the story, so maybe everyone can uh, check it later and they see all the all the details. But uh, what I want to say is about the about the the program. The good thing that I love about it, because I, I started working out with Isa a long time ago, that you will have this app where you can follow uh, while working out. And it's a very nice app and very easy, very friendly, user friendly. And um, it's very motivating. It, it, it keeps you going uh, and it has all the videos to show you all the techniques of all the workouts. Because as we said, or as I said last time, the good thing about Isa is that she explains how the workout is done. And guys, this is the most important thing. All the tiny differences in your posture and, and, and it makes the whole difference. Uh, and Isa, can can we tell people maybe um, the workouts in this uh, program? How how long are each workout? How many minutes? Yeah. Yeah, and this is what I asked you, uh, remember in the beginning, Isa, I only want to work 35 minutes and Isa did it for me and I'm really the happiest because after the workout, I, hi Rita, I go, uh, I, I, I feel so like uh, energized, I don't feel exhausted. And I think this is the best thing about the workout to, to feel like you're like energized, you're, you're feeling better, not you're feeling dead. So the 35 minutes for me were perfect and they were perfect in fitting it in, 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 uh, in my whole day. Like I can work out and half shower in mm -hmm. all one hour. I don't have to spend like two hours doing all the workout and 
all the after uh, work. Uh, so uh, this is what I love about the program, really. And uh, what I what I'm, I read uh, about, yeah, what I read about the program, Isa, as well, that you can. Uh, oops, you good? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know me. <laughs> of course, I know you. <laughs> so uh, I love uh, the, the, the idea of uh, reaching a one-year goal in only 90 days. Yes. So we can talk about this yes. as well later on, okay? Yes. Because so, I'm really excited that everyone knows about this program, and as you, you said, it's a, it's a one week free program, uh, one week uh, free trial in the beginning, and it's happening now. So uh, maybe we can tell uh, people later more. Okay? Yes, yes, yes. We can absolutely talk about this more. Thank you. <laughs> Leo's like, here's your coffee. I'm like, thank you. Hi, Leo. Thank you. <laughs> Why is it that I want my coffee? I want my coffee, right? <laughs> uh, so this is, so I'm so excited, but I just want to remind you guys that during the week, I decided to just teach everything, Carl. I just decided because, do you know, my team's still very small. Yeah. So what I decided to do was like, look, come everybody on board, everybody. We learn a lot. And eventually, you know, in the week after, we can talk about the program. But what I want to, to get everybody excited is I literally sit down and I created three classes where I break down so much information in an yeah. in easy way that I really, if you, like what I'm trying to say is if you come here, you need to come to learn. Because that's the only way that you're going to have one year results in 90 days. Because how many times you, you went to the gym and you spend times and times working out but not seeing results or working out for two hours. I had Bridge here yesterday, one of my clients, and she was saying, like, I, I used to do two hours cardio. Now she does about 35, 45 minutes because she's in a different, you know, different program, different thing. And she's like, it's so much easier now it's like i don't have to work out so much harder and someone is asking and i think this is important for the program uh what are the equipments she will need so i, I, I don't know if yeah it's a, yeah she's yeah. a woman moni yes moni the only thing you need is did you do the light work did you do the workout yesterday we had a workout yesterday we're gonna have one I today <laughs> I didn't do the workout. We had a workout today. We're going to have a workout today. I'm doing like a workshop, a workout workshop. I'm doing okay. like yesterday was a leg workout where we broke down every single exercise. And I told you why we need to do this, how to do this. And yesterday I showed you, I showed that they can use dumbbells. If they don't have dumbbells, they can use bands. If they don't have bands, I even showed like a bag that I have, like a sin bag, which is full of rice. And I was like, you can get a backpack with books inside. You can use uh, detergent bottles, gallon water, anything for resistance. So it doesn't, you don't need to have a fancy bar like I, like I have on the back. <laughs> you know, like you don't need like equipment. And that's why I decided to create the way I created Okay, cool. All right, let's 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 uh, go back to the questions left from last time and then Perfect. we go back to the program again. Perfect. So um, one question was, uh, is walking better for slimming legs than running? I feel my legs get bigger from running. Okay, I'm going to say running is an impact. Okay, so when you run, you do have an impact. You, you will have a small muscle growth on your legs. But it's nothing like you're lifting heavier. It's nothing like you are like in the gym and lifting heavier. Most likely, what's happening is when you start running and your legs become bigger, most likely it could be because when you eat or when you exercise, and especially running, you become hungrier. So most likely okay. you're eating more because you start running. And because you ate more, what happened is you start gaining the weight, you start gaining the muscle, okay? But 
what I think about the running car is, are you doing because you want to lose the weight? What's the reason you're running? So that's what I'm going to ask the person that asked the question. What is the reason that you're running? You're running because you, you think it's going to burn more. It's going to get you slimmer. It's going to get you toner. Or because you because you are because you run because you love. So there's two different. Okay, two different but I, I have a question. Okay, so, so I believe some will will say to lose weight, and some will say because I love running, mm -hmm. because I know a lot of people who who loves running and it makes them feel like lighter and better after. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, when we run, our heart rate increases. Mm -hmm. more than more than walking for sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right yes so that okay. would help him more yes keep going but but if if our heart rate will increase i'm just talking my mind okay yes. maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Yeah. But it, it, when my uh, when our heart rate increases it we burn more calories right mm -hmm. yes so but if you want to eat more but we don't eat like we, we're still at a caloric uh, deficit. deficit I, I think this is how yeah. we do it. Yeah. Uh, we still lose weight. Yeah. So, so now, I, I don't know. Yeah. The question was if walk is bad for slimmer legs. So that means she wants lose and she wants get slimmer and toned. There's no best way, better way to do this. The only best way to do this is resistance training, is lifting. Like I mentioned, the running, if it's good for your head, you do because you love, go for it. But then you can compare. So yesterday on the training, my heart rate got to like 160 something okay. in the workout. Because the way I designed the workout, we designed the workout with very short rest. Yeah. Why I do this? So this way your heart rate steals up the same time. So you don't need the running in order to see results. If you do the running, it's because you want to run because you love to run. But it's not because it's going to give you more results. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. This makes sense. Okay. Yes. But what if people think, I'm just elaborating mm -hmm. on the question. I love that. What if people think uh, when I do your training, my heart rate is like 160, sometimes mm -hmm. 170, and mm -hmm. the whole training, only if I'm just uh, doing some uh, biceps, maybe mm -hmm. I, my, my heart rate goes lower. Mm -hmm. But what if people think when I run, my heart rate goes up to 180 That's or 175? Good. Perfect uh, question. Yeah, tell me about Perfect question. We don't want our heart rate go above 180. So I mean, like, so we have a heart okay, rate. Let's say one, 175. And in we, your we training, don't want that. Okay, we don't want we that. We don't want right. that. So right. let me, we have, some people say five different zones. So, okay, so our heart rate has five different zones. We have zone one, which is right now where I'm sitting and doing nothing, okay? Yeah. So that's about, it's going to be about 40%, 50% of the maximum heart rate. Is so that mine how now is 79, for example. 79. It's because we're talking, because we're like talking. So it's okay. not your resting. Your resting should, you can look on your watch later. Your rest should be a little bit lower. Okay. Your resting is that when you're not doing anything, when you're sleeping, when you're calm. Right now we're live. There's lights in front of us and we're talking and gets up a little bit. So in order to, so zone two would be a light walk. Zone three would be some resistance training, some light jog. Zone four would be a little, like 70, 80%. Zone five would be above 85%. Zone five, when your heart rate is about 85% of your max, and I'll teach you how exactly to you get your max, we're working, we're not burning fat anymore. We're working our cardiovascular system. That's for athletes. So meaning that's when you do a sprint explosion exercises. If you think about, you can't handle your heart rate being that high for a long, long time, right? That's yeah. why when people sprint, they sprint in a short, in the short span. They can't just 
keep the, the same heart rate 180, 190 for like a 5K run. So in order to actually burn fat, you need to be about 65, 75% of your maximum heart rate. Which is how, between what? what I'm how do we like. do that? Beautiful. How do we do that? 220 minus your age. This is a general math account that you do. 220 minus your age. If you're 40 years old, okay, 220 minus 40 will be 180. So the maximum heart rate of that person would be 180. But it's science. Well, we can be black and white, right? So for science, it depends. My, I'm 35, almost 36. I am, my heart rate, I'm sure, my maximum heart rate, I'm sure it's not going to be the same one as somebody that is 35 and it's completely sedentary. Do you see that a little bit difference? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that would change in this way. So we don't want, if you're going to run and your heart rate is 170, 180, and you barely breathing, knowing, I just want to make sure you know that you're actually not burning, you're not on the fat burn zone. The idea would be like, take a jog, not a running, a jog, something lighter, and then your heart rate start getting a little bit lower, then you sprint a little bit, then you lower a little bit. And that's why intervals are so effective because they're taking you from a comfort zone and get your heart rate up and then get your heart rate down, get your heart rate up and down. That's why they're so much more effective or burning fat. Okay. But uh, again, let me, let me do an example on me. So yeah. everyone gets it. Okay. Mm -hmm. so 220 minus 32 is okay. uh, not, uh, 187, uh, 188. Okay. Okay. So this is my maximum heart rate. In box, yes. Okay. And what is my fat burning heart rate? 67 to 70%. 67 to 75% of that maximum heart rate. Let me get a, I have my iPad here. Let me get my oh, yeah, please. That's later. <laughs> Do that for me, please. Yeah. Yeah, right. 67 to 70%. Calculate it. Calculate it. I don't have a calculator on my on my iPad. Are you kidding me? Hold on, Wait. look at my computer. Okay, let me do that. 188 okay. multiplied by how, how much? 0.75. 0.75 okay this is 140 oh my okay. god i didn't know it's that no low. but you you're doing you're doing good you're doing good but then did you put 75 yeah yeah it's okay. 140 good. good so doing the workout if your heart rate go, but that's carl again that is an average okay, okay? so be, if your heart rate it's between 140 okay and one th i would say 132 to 145 that's a great zone to you be but when you do the heart when you check the heart rate and your heart rate is 160 doing the workout your heart rate doesn't sustain 160 because you take that's, rest. It goes low, yeah it goes lower that's right. that's okay why. so if so if i if i'm doing my workout and i'm checking my watch and it's between mm -hmm. 135 to 145, I know that the whole 35 minutes, I'm burning fat. Technically, right? yes. But I or want I'm you burning for, whatever yes. fat or muscle. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, we don't want muscle. muscle. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we don't want. <laughs> but that's the, the, yes, that's the idea. But I this will be much easier to keep on count when you're doing cardio. Because it's easy because you're normally on a steady pace, right? Yeah. And that the, the beautiful thing is the more you the more you train, the more condition you're gonna get. So, for example, your rest heart rate. That's what I noticed when the girls coming into the the program. I noticed the rest heart rate would be like seventy, and then after a while they're like sixty-seven, because the more mm -hmm. we work our heart. 
look how cool. The more we work our heart, the less our heart has to be when we're at rest. That means yeah. is you work out your heart, right? That's why it's cardio, cardio respiratory exercises, cardiovascular exercise. So that's why we do cardio to work out our heart. But when you work out our heart, our heart gets stronger, gets healthier. So that means my heart is like, well, if I'm strong and healthy, I don't have to beat as much during the day. So you actually yeah. give your heart a break during the day, which is that's that's the beauty of. Cool. Okay. Yeah. And, and do you do you uh, recommend that we do a cardio uh, workout in 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 the week, like once a week? And when we say cardio, then the heart rate what? will be more than 140. My 140, right? It might be 160, 170. No. They or no. So it depends. I if you decided to do, and this is important, if you decided to do a workout and a cardio, if I put in your program or there's in a program option to do a cardio, make sure you do the cardio after. Okay. Look how cool. Our body takes about 12, 13 minutes to start burning fat. And if you do the cardio before, okay, by the time you get to the to the workout, you already kind of wasted that that not wasted, but our body takes right. about yeah. five, seven minutes to to warm up, right? Three to five, seven minutes to warm up. And then I would suggest if you'd like to do some cardio, you can do after. But it will depend on each person. It will depend on the idea is to be in that zone. The 65, 75% zone, unless you have a different objective. If my objective, I spend a long time that my objective is not fat burning, is actually getting my heart stronger. So I would go a little bit higher. Okay. But this see? means, yeah, yeah. But my, sorry, I'm asking too many questions. No, <laughs> no, I love that. Okay. It is. Like if, if, if I'm doing a, your program and I'm sure mm -hmm. that my heart rate is in this zone, like 140, mm -hmm. this 75%, this means I'm doing cardio? No. No, but no, but I'm um, um, but I'm burning equivalent. fat. Okay, yes, but yes, I'm burning fat. Yes. Yes. yes, but um, I mean, yeah. What? Let's wait. Go ahead, back. Yeah. Okay. So if I if I do the workout and after the workout I want to do some cardio. Okay. Heart. I want to still burn fat. I don't want to okay. uh, work my heart. So I don't want to okay. go above the 170 or, or whatever. Stay in the same what zone. What is my zone? Stay in the same zone. So in your case, will be 130 something, 140 something. Oh, wow. Okay. One, maybe 150 something. But the idea, to be honest, even for cardio, I love the intervals more. So if you can do, if you on if you decide to take a walk, you can do a walk, jog, walk, jog, walk, jog. And then you can, or you can do a, a sprint, jog, sprint, jog, or a sprint, walk, sprint, walk. You see, it's better to do the interval. Like always better but to do what the if, interval. What if when I sprint, my heart like increase, my heart rate increases to 170? Is, is it good? Question. Yes, because your heart, you're only gonna sprint for 20 seconds, 30 seconds. So okay. it's just a peak. You're not going to sustain the 170. Like if I'm sprinting for a minute and a half, which I haven't done in a long time, but if I'm sprinting for a minute and a half and I keep holding my heart 170, that's different. But when you do a peak and you drop, because when you drop, you're going to drop for 140, 150, and then you yeah. go up. Do you see? Yeah, I get Good. it. Now, okay. Carl, one thing that when you were saying it came in my head, it was like, okay, Isa, if I start, let's let's say if I started walking and I look my heart rate, my heart rate is 110. How should I increase my heart rate? Walk faster. Look at first street that has heels. The idea is to, when you walk, the idea is to, woo, I'm actually tired. Some yeah. people that go for a walk, they have a friend and they talk the whole time and they don't feel anything. Like my mom, 
My mom is like, I walked for five miles today at the beach. I'm like, did you? Did you talk the whole time? And she's like, uh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, walk faster. <laughs> Same thing with the workout. Your workout, your heart rate is not, not having enough. Lift heavier. Okay. Lift I get heavier, it. heart rate's going to go up. All right, cool. Yeah. And and last question about this: when mm -hmm. I when I do my workout and I want to do an extra, how many minutes of cardio is good after the workout? Like 20, uh, 30, 10? I would say no more than thirty. Twenty. No more than. 30. I love twenty. It depends on your objective, right? If you a type of person that needs to lose a little bit more. Okay, I would go 25, 30 minutes. If you're a person that has to lose just a little bit less, I would go 15, 20 minutes. But that's like a sweet spot. Okay. And I would do after, uh, definitely after the workout. And not every time you, uh, I work out, I do cardio after. Normally, I, I, not after leg days. Leg days are normally much, much heavier. Okay. And your oh, body's. Yeah. Probably has already super deep lead from yes. from yes right yeah makes yes. sense yeah okay Kate is asking a question my routine is fifteen to thirty minutes nonstop run on the treadmill or star stair master that's great that's really really good if you were able to sustain that Kate that's amazing are you doing that before or after the workout. Yeah, the, but main thing, now the main thing the is the workout. The main yeah. thing is the workout. The, yeah, I get it. Yes, the main thing is the workout. That's the best, best way. All right, let's uh, go to the next question. Some people are, you're okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> reading the another question. This is one Hi. question here. <laughs> okay, Kate is saying uh, before, so, okay, okay. So now we, we all <laughs> have learned one thing today to do the cardio after. Yeah, okay. okay. Kate, if you do after, you can actually be able to, to spend that 30 minutes in a better, like more an effect burn zone, yeah. if that's the and, case. Yeah. And also give the workout our max. And this is... Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So, because if you imagine, if I do, if my priority to see the result it's my strength training if i do 30 minutes of stair master before mm -hmm. my training i'm gonna get to my training like i'm already tired yes so before and after, that's a beast right there <laughs> <laughs> how's that working Kate? are you seeing results that you want are you exactly in the place that you want that's that's the main question yeah. right that's, that's the main, the main question. question right Okay, so next question. Um, people, we, we know many people, I think the percentage is big when we say losing weight, but there are also people who would like to gain weight. Okay, so if uh, someone wants to gain weight, let's, uh, let's say, Isa, um, maybe someone wants to gain a bit of fat or someone wants to gain a bit of muscles. Because as I know uh, that for girls, a certain percentage of fat is healthy. Un under this percentage, it becomes very unhealthy. So let's talk about that too, because I see a lot of women comparing themselves to their partner or friends, uh, like a guy with a 14% fat or less, or 10 and uh, 7 and those crazy numbers. And us women are not the same, especially that we have breasts and breasts are mm -hmm. all about fat. Uh, this this makes actually the difference plus other things. So let's talk about this a bit. Perfect. So what is, let's start with this. What would be a low percentage body fat that is in a healthy way? Carol, I would say no lower than 14. Some, some books, some doctors would even say for women, 12 is like the limit, limit, limit. I truly do not want none, absolutely none of my clients on the 12. And what I would really want to see is like, how are you feeling? 
I would say 12, when you go lower than 12%, you already start seeing some hormonal problems. You start seeing some special relief our period. Our period is the first one to, to get into a shock. Yeah. Now, yeah. when you said some, some women are comparing themselves with their partners and the male, a guy can get to 4%, 5% and be completely okay. Okay. For us, we're different. And exactly, when you, you talk about like the breast, yes, we have a huge concentration of fat in the breast. Like when I start my transformation, I lost half of my boobs. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> not even kidding <laughs> on, on my transformation because it's fat, right? And we, yeah. we and fat is extremely important for us, extremely important for us. One, it would protect us, protect our organs. It's going to help us on hormonal produ uh, production. And so if we can't keep that low. Now you mentioned, how do I actually gain weight? When we talk, talk about gaining weight, let's think about gaining muscle, right? How can I increase my muscle mass? And that would go into the, to the food, right? Remember when we talk about we have to be in a calorie deficit in order to yeah. burn, the, burn the fat. And in order to increase, you have to be... And a little bit plus when you're trying to gain a little bit of weight. So that means is if you're trying to build muscle, getting tone, or and and you're trying to actually get, go the, get the, your scale to go up, the idea is to eat a little bit more than you spend. Okay, one second. Eat more. In which macro exactly? In proteins or uh, in fat or in carbs? I think or that is, yeah, it's, that's a great question. That is a perfect, you need that perfect balance, right? We need okay. that perfect balance. Eat. I don't agree. That's my personal opinion. I don't agree of taking a completely, we talked about this last time, taking a completely macronutrient out of your, your meals, just like, you're taking out the carbs, right? But can you do that? Yes, as a strategy, not as a lifestyle. But adjusting your macros would be increasing all three, okay? And keeping that percentage, it would depend on case to case, but you're keeping that percentage in a well balanced. Like a percentage okay. that I like doing, I like using with some of my clients, it would be a 30% protein, 30% of your meals will be protein, 35% will be from carbs, 35% will be from fats. fats. <laughs> yes. Okay, someone is asking, how do I gain muscle mass and at the same time lose weight? The idea is at first, Randa, it depends when you're, if you're trying, for example, if you're trying to lose weight, okay? If you're trying to burn the fat, the idea is keeping your muscle there. Sometimes you can even increase your muscle a little bit, but the idea is let's get that lower that your percentage body fat first, then we think about increasing your muscle. But the idea and the secret, I was talking to Carla this week and show one of the girls that she was able to, to drop from 24%. Oh my to God. <laughs> To nine, that, we got this her. case is wow. Because we got we got her in body, and she went from twenty four percent body fat to nineteen percent body fat, and she maintained by the dot her muscle mass, and that would be the perfect case. Everybody's different. Yes. Everybody works in a different way, but that would be in a in a great, great, great way. I don't want you thinking about like how can increase the. The, the muscle and drop the fat at the same time, what's the rush? <laughs> if you can drop the fat and keeping your muscle the same or even losing just a line a little bit, that is a great. The problem is when we go to extreme diets, when you do starvation diets, you drop both very fast. And when you do things like this, when you gain the weight, it's so much faster. You know, when you get the way back, because if I decided to completely cut my calories and I'm going to lose five kilos in two weeks in one week, which is crazy. And then by the time I start eating as a normal bean, 
all the muscle comes back all like the all, all, all the, the weight, the weight. exactly yeah okay cool uh how uh, th th this question is for me so sorry Rhonda. Uh, so basically in a diet i should eat more protein Rhonda, i think it's it's a very uh, complicated thing and that's why uh, working with a coach i felt that this makes the whole difference like uh, giving you uh, a nutrition plan and a, a workout plan and then uh, the in body is very important to doing the in body before starting and then doing the in body after two weeks for example to see where you are at and so on so i believe this is this is very important because sometimes we think and I've been in the in the in the uh, like a training industry for so many time for so for for so uh, many years I worked uh, in a in a in a gym as a marketing manager like 3 years and I've been involved in this a lot and I always thought I can do it on my own but it's not that easy it's not that easy and when when I decided to go with a coach it's it's totally different and the and isa for example makes she will make me yeah uh, uh, soon i will start that to weigh all my food and uh, like do the exact thing that she says because it's not easy to reach a goal just like that just working out and increase a piece of chicken it's not that easy so i think yeah, any working with a coach is the best is the best uh, solution. It's uh, funny. It, I, I, can't, I, I, I would say something about that. It's, it's, it's interesting to think about it because if we, if we're sick, we, we go to the doctors, right? Yeah. And I think, to be honest, I, the fitness industry, I, right now, especially here, I'm gonna say here, right now, it's, it's a little bit unfair. I'm going to tell you why, because anyone can become a fitness trainer. Anyone can become a nutrition coach. Anyone can become like an actual personal trainer. And you do like you buy a book, you take a test and some people do like two weekend certifications and they become a, a trainer. But if you start thinking about, we're talking about science, we're talking about anatomy, we talk about physiology, we're talking about like neuroscience things that they are so important and then like weight loss it's a science fitness is a science so yeah. when you start thinking that and i would highly suggest when when you, you're looking for somebody look their credential if you they, if they say certified personal training but they have like i don't know some of them are, are really good but if they say just certified personal trainer and that's it just look what they actually studied. Look if they actually had the classes that they know where to talk about. Ask them why. That's it. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? If they answer you why, that's great. But I know a lot of trainers that if I asked them why, they would have no idea why. Hmm. True. That's very important. true. Yep. Uh, Basma, we will come to your question very soon because it's important. Isa, how can I make my calf? Uh, smaller. I want to make. My <laughs> Can we lose? Uh, what, uh, mm -hmm. And this. Okay. Okay. Let, uh, let me combine two questions. What if I I do an in body, mm -hmm. and my muscle mass is really big, mm -hmm. like or let's say it's not big for you, but for me, I want to make certain muscles smaller. I just want to look slimmer. So let's combine these together. Is this possible and how? We cannot, cannot target fat loss. Like Not I, I, must, want to lose, I want to lose just all my calves. I want to lose just all my triceps. I want to lose just all my butt. We can't target fat loss, but if the calves are very, like we need to see how big they are we're talking about it's just the calves that they're very strong or does you have another part of the body that needs to slim down if you do mm. most likely the when you slim down the calves will also slim down 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And what about uh, the exercises that are called uh, muscle failure exercises? Mm -hmm. For example, remember when I told you I do the mega form once per mm -hmm. week. Now, now mm -hmm. I've been uh, I've been uh, like away from it uh, for for so many reasons. But when I used to go and do it, I did it once per week. And it's all about muscle failure and you start shaking in the exercise and so on. And this actually made a lot of people go slimmer. They lost fat and they mm -hmm. lost muscles. Mm -hmm. So do you agree with that? So I love, I go to muscle failure and some of my clients are already in that level. I think it, it's a level. You build up to go to that. You go to build up to you go to like you no longer can lift. That is the idea, because if you think about when we work out, workouts are stressor in our imagine our fibers, our muscle fibers, they're like this. When yeah. we work out, we make tiny little cuts in our fiber. That's why we get sore the next day and especially the day after, like 48 hours after. Right. So in order to our body come in repair and become a little bit stronger, and become a little bit more toned, we need to start pushing the workout. I said that in yesterday's class. If you work out and the workout has 20 reps and you're like, 20, I'm done. You hmm. are not pushing your, you're not pushing your limits, right? So when yeah. you start going to work out, that's why I love doing use ranges or sets. It's like you go between 12 to 15, you go to 10 to 12. Why do I give you two numbers? Why is it you just don't pick one number? Because I want to see you really tired between 12 and 15 reps or between 10 and 12 and reps. 12. If mm -hmm. you cannot do 10, it's because the weight that you're trying to do is too heavy. And if you do more than 12, that means the weight is too light. So that's how we find the perfect weight for our workout. You look in your program. If your program says 10 to 12, that means you need to get super, super, super tired, pretty much almost muscle failure between 10 and 12 reps. If your body, if your, tra if your program says 12 to 15, again, you need to be super, super tired between 12 and 15. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And what if, uh, for example, for guys, what if they they want to make their muscles uh, bigger? Is it also about muscle failure, but eat more or no muscle failure at all? I would say everything is about getting to that level because, Carl, we need to be pushing our muscles. Our muscles are too smart. Our body adapts. So if you've been doing the same workouts, for a long time, your body will adapt to that workout. You need a different stimulus. You need a different method or you need a different training or you need a different, it could be just what I do in each phase. Like for you guys, I change your plans every four weeks. Why? Because I want to make sure your body never adapts. When we adapt, plateau happens. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, let's go to uh, Basma's uh, question. Do you believe in keto diet? <laughs> <laughs> that question. So keto to me is a strategy. It's a powerful strategy. Yes, you can lose weight on keto. Keto is no lifestyle. So it's really hard. We're talking about this. It's re when you take an entire macronutrient like carbs out of your diet, okay, your body is going to go in shock and it's going to be like, what is happening? So I'm, then you start losing weight fast. But after a while, your body is going to be like, wait a minute, slow down. Let's slow down a little bit and let's see what's the reason. And, and think about this. When you take carb out, you're not just taking carbs out. You're taking fiber out. You're taking uh, vitamins out you take minerals out so it is a strategy that you can absolutely use but but 
you absolutely need to do for a short period of time, not a long period of time, a short yeah. period of time. But again, I would highly, highly, highly suggest you get a coach for that. You get a nutritionist for help you that because what was happening here is people were doing keto. I talk to women on the phone, people were doing keto and they were like, oh, I'm eating sausage and bacon. And I'll be like, no, the real, you focus on the wrong now, type of fat. I, and th there's also something else, uh, the, whip, the whipped cream or the whipping cream, it's different. But uh, the, the, this cream is actually non-dairy. It has a lot of hydrogenated fat. It's, it's like trans fat. Trans fat and it, it's it's a it's a really bad ingredient and i see it's uh, it's used a lot in keto and by the way for those who don't know keto it's not just taking out bread no you also have to limit for example your your consumption of of, of course fruits and carrots and beetroot and uh, pomegranate molasses and like a lot of things that have hidden sugar good sugar but mm -hmm. It, it, it's hard. It's very hard. And I feel that the body uh, gets tired after this. And I always say that keto is good to lower the insulin level. Mm -hmm. For example, sometimes if someone has, I think, is a, a hormonal problem where it's all about your insulin level is very mm -hmm. high. It's good to do keto as a medicinal uh, medicinal uh, diet to lower Absolutely. this insulin but not like uh, i've been on keto for a year for me this is very unhealthy and mm -hmm. obviously for isa too yeah. so the, yeah, yeah so, so like i said keto it could be used as a strategy for something specific yeah. or something but not as a lifestyle and like, yes, keto is very big into like endocrinologists, like doctors are prescribing keto for this, for this reason, the same as intermediate fasting that would help you with their hormonal balance. Yep. Uh, again, the, the intermittent fasting will help you what? With the hormonal balance as well, because when you fast for a while, mm -hmm. your body is, has time to adjust right? So for example, when you, but if you think about, we all fast, if we eat at 8 p.m. at yeah. night and you had breakfast at 8 a.m., we all fasting for 12 hours. But that is a good, like, I found that a lot of, like, oh, a lot of my doctor's clients, they do love intermittent fasting for more and more a lifestyle because they're like, look, I'm in the hospital all day. I'm sleeping she's all day. I don't have time to eat and I feel okay. So it goes a lot by like individuals, like what is, what is actually working from them. But I heard that intermittent fasting, the 16, eight hours, I heard it from someone very specialized in hormones. She's called uh, Alisa Viti, that it's very bad for women, the intermittent fasting, the 16, eight hour thing. But I, I always think six things too long, absolutely. Yeah, so and especially yeah. because if you think about it, you only eating two meals a day. You have to be extremely careful. What are you eating? Because you're going to be so much easier to be deficient and in a nutrient, for example. Yeah. yeah. Uh, about keto, there there was another question. Uh, keto pros and cons. Uh, what are the essential vitamins and min minerals during keto? So uh, as you said, if someone is going on a keto diet, so first of all, uh, I, the pros are that you get a good, a good result. Yes, but it's not a lifestyle. It's not good for you because you lose a lot of minerals and uh, one of the macros, as Isa said. But what if Isa, someone wants to do it for a month? You what need... Month? You need... The most important thing about the keto is you need an exit strategy. You need to make that transition very smooth. And also the transition of going into keto. Like I have, out of all my clients, I have one client, one client right now. She's not on a keto. She's on a very low carb diet. But we had to make a transition to get her in for three weeks and a transition to get her out. Do you see what I mean? Because if you do keto and you lost fast, 
and then you stop and you start eating go back and go back to your old habits go back to your old routines most likely the weight's gonna come back we okay. what we need to change is again it's a lifestyle what we need to change is the lifestyle is the routine that we're in does that make sense and if, yeah but if someone is doing keto let's put it this way i i okay. want to do keto and someone is doing keto what are the minerals and vitamins they should have or take in your opinion we need we need all the vitamins and all the minerals and the idea is i think the main thing about keto is you need to go on online and buy some keto stripe like it's the little liquor strip and you actually have to go to the bathroom and you have to test your urine to see if you actually run your ketosis if you're actually using fat as as a, a fuel if you're doing keto and you're not checking your urine there's no point of doing keto. like you have to be checking to make sure you're actually using uh, like because what happened in keto is our body use glucose as a fuel right and when you take the the carb you take the yeah. sugar out you're gonna your body is going to fat. yeah it's going to use the fat as a fuel so it's going to we call this ketosis so but now you actually need to check if you're actually is happening this. I use like for my body, I did a, which call it resting metabolic rate where I put a mask and I did this whole panel of like super cool to see what am I, what is the few that my body runs in. And I also saw like exactly how many calories I burn at rest, exactly how many calories I burn. And I was in the 80% fat, 20% carb without going into keto. Just by training, just by eating properly. So my body just have this analysis and eating. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but, but it's it's something simple that's like some I went I did it in the gym. Okay. At the gym that I used to work out, they they do that. I went there and just did then a test. But I embody. And it was funny because I love the body. I always do the embodies, but this was a little bit action. It was an opportunity that I had to do. It. And I was like, but you know what? I'm just going to do it to see. But then like, that's what I'm saying. You don't actually need to go to keto in order to see that. Yeah. Uh, do I have to count calories daily to follow a healthy routine? <laughs> <laughs> I think people who don't count calories, look how funny. It's like, if you have a meal plan, that you follow to the T, you you don't need to count the calories because the meal plan would already do to you. But it's important to you once in a while, just log all the food. It's important. Log all the food just so you have an idea because I have so many women who come to me and say, I eat healthy. I really do. And when we log their food, like item by item, what they eat that day, they're like, oh, I'm not eating enough protein or oh, I eat half of the protein that I had or like, oh, I'm actually not eating enough. I only ate a thousand calories today. So it's, it's interesting. It's important to once a week, just log your food, just to make sure you're on the right track. Because sometimes we think we're eating healthier. We think we're eating enough and it's, it's not. It's not. Okay. Yeah. Um, Last question. Uh, last question okay yeah because it's almost time it was gonna kick us out <laughs> all right uh okay uh, this is this is uh, an important one workout or diet better for belly fat or only area where i'm gaining weight hmm. we cannot target we can't not target not fat, fat loss can't target fat loss can't target fat loss it, how can I lose my belly? We're going to have to do two things. One, strength training. Two, low calories deficit so we can lower your percentage body fat. And it's important to do core exercise because when you start losing and losing and you start getting slimmer, women come to me and say, I want to have abs. I want to have abs. And I was like, okay, you need two things. Abs is a muscle. You need to work out that muscle. So you can actually see the definition and lower your percentage body fat. Because imagine if I'm working out my muscles and lower my percentage body fat, and this is my skin, <laughs> this, is, this is a crazy analogy that I'm doing right now. 
your muscle is gonna pop, right? But you need to increase the muscle mass on your core, work your core, get your core strong, and lower your percentage body fat. All right, cool. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, well, okay. Yeah. So everyone, uh, we were talking uh, that Isa has a new program starting mm -hmm. from, tell me the date. Because so I the Result that. Acceleration Week starts on the 29th, but this week I'm doing a bunch of stuff. We're going live every day. We're doing workouts. We're doing talks like this. Um, yeah. Tomorrow I have two more, two more lives. And Friday and Saturday we have a workshops, which is... We have a upper body today, and then on Friday we have a core workshop, and then we have a booty workshop because I had to do it. Because if I don't do it, the girls will kill me. But what I want to say is, Car is gonna do a swipe up, and make sure you sign up through Car's page. Yes, yeah. and come to the Facebook group and come to the Telegram group. Okay. All the yep. classes and all the everything, all those lives, most of those lives are not going to be saved here. They're going to only save on in the Facebook group and the Telegram group. Yes, exactly. So wait for my story on the swipe mm -hmm. up to know more about this fit fitness uh, program and how to enroll in it. I all think right. Cara, this this week yeah. you can put um, if you can put a highlight. So we'll keep yes. always that. I'll put, I'll put, yeah, I'll start to highlight with Isa anyway because uh, I'm getting back on track. I need to get back on track. Done. And, uh, and so l let me know if you need anything and also DM Isa if you need anything. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay, let's have a picture. Smile, Isa. Yes, <laughs> let me take my screenshot. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Bye. Bye. Guys. Bye. Bye.